Anytime we get to talk to somebody who's done something more at Carolina than anyone in Carolina history ever <laughs> has, we really enjoy that opportunity. And that's today's guest, Kamari Morales, who has more touchdown catches by, the, by a tight end than anyone in Carolina football history. Kamari, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you so much for having me on the show. So how'd you do it? How'd you catch more touchdowns? Carolina's had some good tight ends now. Why is Kamari Morales the guy who's caught more touchdowns than any of them? Um, to, be, uh, to be completely honest with you, I feel like a lot of it's just been uh, the luck of the draw. <laughs> uh, you know, just the ball just somehow, some way continues to find me, um, especially when we get down to the red zone. Um, I have to give a lot of that credit to, you know, the guys that's in the room with me. Uh, they definitely help out with that. Definitely Coach Lilly, you know, and the play calls obviously have just been, you know, in my favor. But it's definitely been like the guys at tight end with me that, you know, maybe run a route to bring somebody else to cover them. And then somehow, some way I get left wide open. So though I got the record, uh, a lot of the credit, honestly, probably most of it goes to them. So, Kamari, one thing that Coach Brown talked a ton about this offseason for the offense was getting more touchdowns in the red zone, not having to settle for field goals when you guys got down there in the red zone. What role have you and the tight ends played in really improving in that area this year? Um, well, we know when we get down to that part of the field, you know, you know that's our area, that's our zone. You know, we know that we can uh, – you know, make a huge impact in the game when the ball gets down there. Uh, we definitely look forward to, you know, getting down there. And we go into every game, every single week, with an idea of what we want to call when we get down to that area. And, you know, generally speaking, a lot of times the ball ends up finding the tight end position. So, you know, we take a lot of pride in being able to put points on the board, especially when we get down there so close to the end zone. We know just how important that is to the game. That has been such an effective position, talking about the tight end position between you and John Copenhaver and Bryson Nesbitt. Uh, tell us a little bit about that room, why you guys work well together, and why that has been such a uh, successful spot for Carolina this year. Um, I would say because, you know, all three of us have a genuine love for, for each other. Like, you know, we're more excited when another guy scores than <laughs> we are. Like, I can thank every single time you know, when I've scored and John's been in the game, like, he's more fired up than me. It actually kind of scares me a little bit. <laughs> uh, you know, same with uh, Bryson. And I think that just goes, you know, with everybody just in the room. You know, we have a, a genuine excitement to see each other make plays because, you know, at one point in time, like when I first got here, tight end wasn't, you know, very active in this offense. So to see the transition that is made, you know, even since I've been here, uh, you know, we take a lot of pride in that. So we're, you know, very genuinely happy for each other. You mentioned Coach Lilly. It feels like he's done a really good job with that position group. What is it about the way he teaches and coaches that has been so effective? Uh, well, first, if you're going to talk about Coach Lilly, like, let's talk about how he's the greatest tight end coach in the country. And, mm -hmm. I'm, and I'm not just saying that because he, cause he coaches me. You know, his knowledge of the game, what he brings to the table, like there is nobody in the country that does it better than him. You know, he's a great, genuine person. Um, he's somebody that I honestly look up to, like, bigger than just football. You know, he brings his kids around all the time. So, you know, I respect him as a father, as a husband. You know, I, I genuinely look up to him. Um, like, he's one of those coaches that I text, like, happy Father's Day, every, uh, every Father's Day. And I have my father in my life. But, you know, Coach Lilly is just such, like, a great, you know, figure to me. So I just have, like, a lot of genuine respect for him. So whenever he says something to me and uh, whenever he's teaching me something, you know, about the game of football, just life in general, I soak it all up. And I think everybody's like that in our room, that we have a genuine respect for him. And everybody on the team has a tremendous amount of respect for him. So I think it's just the type of guy he is, and that's how, you know, great things are happening for him and the guys in the room. What's an example of something he's taught you as the best tight ends coach in the country that's maybe enabled you to think about the game or your position a little differently? Uh, well, like... Something simple, even like just talking about like in the run game, um, like I just used to go out there, like prior to him getting here, I just used to go out here and be like, okay, I know I got to block this guy because it's this play. But now, you know, since he's come here, like I've learned like, oh, this guy's declared the mic. So if this is the mic, okay, they're working here. So that means I got X, Y, and Z. It just makes the game like so much slower for me. Um, he's helped me tremendously with film study, like, knowing how to 
break down film and look at tendencies and this, that, and third. And it's actually gotten to the point now where like, I'll be thinking something and then he'll say it, or I'll say something and then he'll be like, I was thinking that as well. Like I can remember countless times where I'd be like, hey coach, you know, I see this on film, we should do this, this, and this. And he'd be like, well, that actually went in, it's actually gonna go in tomorrow. <laughs> so like, you know, me and him were just like on one accord. Um, and that's just because he's such a great coach and he's taught me so well. Kamari's looking at some of those plays going, what about that throw the ball to Kamari play? What if we added that into the game plan right here? He said, that's a good idea, Kamari. We'll do that uh, for this week's game. <laughs> um, Coach Brown's talked a lot about having a player-led team. Coaches, of course, and you're talking about Coach Lilly, they, they have a huge role in that. But at some point, the players uh, need to have some ownership and leadership as well. As one of the older guys on this team, how have you tried to, to grab some of that and, and help pull along some of your younger teammates? Um, you know, Coach Brown has said this multiple times. When I was younger, I didn't really, when I was a young guy on the team, I didn't understand it. You know, he always says, like, young guys, you know, they just want to come in here, they just want to play. You know, they came in from high school, they were the man, so they just want to play. And, um, and that's very true. I know when I was young, I didn't care about what. When I first got here, Obviously, I care about winning, but most importantly, I want to get on the field. And, you know, as the older you get, you know, you realize that winning is the most important thing. So, like, you know, as an older guy, that's what I've been trying to teach, like, the younger guys, like, look, man, it's all about winning when you get to this level, and your time will come. You know, you just got to be patient. And I feel like the younger guys, you know, are falling in line. You know, they look at older guys like myself, or even guys, you know, um, either even other guys on the team. And um, so, yeah, I think they just listened to what we said. Kamari, how'd you come up with the idea for the graduation patch on the uniform? And most importantly, how the heck did you graduate in three years while playing football? <laughs> um, so the graduation patch, uh, to be completely honest with you, so my dad went to University of Florida. So I'm a, uh, I was a real big Gator fan growing up. And because of that, like, I love watching SEC football like even to this day. Um, I love to watch the SEC. And when I, when I was coming out of high school and stuff like that, I always noticed like if guys had the graduate patch, because the SEC does it, where they put graduate under the SEC logo. And I've always noticed that. And I noticed that the ACC like didn't have that. And um, it actually kind of like genuinely bothered me, you know, because I knew I was gonna graduate in three years. So I knew I would be able to uh, wear the patch. And then one day I was just like in like a SAC meeting and I had just brought it to their attention. And they were like, you know what, that's a great idea. And, you know, it got approved. And now this year we're wearing it. So it's like, that's honestly like one of my biggest accomplishments, um, I would say, being in college. You know, everybody looks at what you do on the field. But, you know, that, that was like one of my biggest accomplishments, in my personal opinion. And as far as graduating in three years, um, Definitely wasn't easy. <laughs> Definitely wasn't easy, but I, I would just say I just saw it through. I knew it was something I wanted to do. I told my parents I was going to do it. When I came to college, I'm going to graduate in three years. I'm going to find a way to do it. Um, I loaded up on classes. I remember one summer I took five classes. Ooh. So, yeah, I just loaded up on classes, and I knew it was something I wanted to do because I knew I wanted to go to grad school. And now I'm in grad school, and, you know, once you start it, you know, you can come back and finish, uh, finish it even if you go to the NFL. So I just want to set myself up for the future, um, you know, not be selfish, not just think about myself, but think about my future wife and kids. All right, Kamara, we got about a minute left. What is important now, final five games here, the regular season? You guys have, it feels like kind of gone from, oh, having a nice season to this could be a special season. Now, what, what needs to happen here over the last month plus? Uh, we got to get better every single week. We can't have a letdown. You know, we can't go out there one game and just go to sleep. Um, though we're six and one, like we played a lot of close games and we could easily be probably four and three, you know, or eight or worse. So we know that we need to go out there and continue to get better every single day, every single game. We cannot have no letdowns. We just got to go out there and practice with a purpose. And if we go do that, you know, everything will take care of itself. Um, you know, you just got to win, keep winning. We'll get to Charlotte, and, you know, we'll worry about winning in Charlotte when we get there. No tight end in Tariel history has more touchdowns than that guy right on the screen. And it's not Adam, it's Kamari. Kamari, thanks so much for your time. Thank you so much for having me.